Seven past the hour today, the Republican National Committee will consider a resolution that would censure Congresswoman Liz Cheney and Congressman Adam Kinzinger, the two Republicans sitting on the House Select Committee investigating January 6. The measure was advanced by a smaller RNC panel last night. A close ally of former President Trump, David Bossie, originally submitted the proposal in it. He called for Cheney and Kinzinger to be expelled from the party. But yesterday, it was watered down to a censure. The resolution being voted on today says the party must not be sabotaged <laughs> by Cheney and Kinzinger. It claims they support Democratic efforts to destroy the former president more than they support winning back a Republican majority in 2022. The resolution calls for the RNC to, quote, immediately cease any and all support of them as members of the Republican Party for their behavior which has been destructive to the institution of the U.S. House of Representatives and the Republican Party and our republic, and is inconsistent with the position of the conference. It is unclear whether the measure will be approved today, but both Cheney and Kinzinger have already responded. Congresswoman Cheney tweeted in part this, the leaders of the Republican Party have made themselves willing hostages to a man who admits he tried to overturn a presidential election. I'm a constitutional conservative, and I do not recognize those in my party who have abandoned the Constitution to embrace Donald Trump. History will be their judge. I will never stop fighting for our constitutional republic, no matter what. And Congressman Kinzinger released a statement writing in part this, rather than focus their efforts on how to help the American people, my fellow Republicans have chosen to censure two lifelong members of their party for simply upholding their oaths of office. They've allowed conspiracies and toxic tribalism to hinder their ability to see clear-eyed. Joining us now, former chairman of the Republican National Committee, Michael Steele. He's an MSNBC political analyst. Michael, I was having a hard time reading the reasons that they are doing this because it, 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 they sound so ridiculous and they also sound like they should be levied at the actual people who are doing the censure. Um, yeah. Again, I, I feel like... This effort to embarrass them um, is them continuing to support something that's not going to age well. Uh, you're absolutely right, Mika. There's no doubt about it. This is this is an, a, another form of projection. Uh, the very words that they throw at Liz and Adam uh, apply to them. Uh, and, and the yeah. fact that, you know, Liz, Liz got it exactly right. You know, th this is a party that has willingly allowed itself to become hostage to Donald Trump. Uh, to what end? How do you think this is going to end? Um, you know, and, and, and the broader test, I think, for the country, and I've been saying this, and I will continue to say this right through the November elections, folks, these people, as my mama would say, are showing you they're behind. They are showing you yeah. they're behind. So, <laughs> so, so what do you think happens when you give power back to them? What do you think happens mm. when Kevin McCarthy or Jim Jordan is sitting there? Mm. Who do you think gets censured then? I mean, yeah, you know, so, the, and here's, the, the, here's the sweet part, Mika. Here's the sweet part. Mm -hmm. These idiots actually think Trump won't turn around and come after them. I mean, just oh, ask God. Lindsey Graham in the last week. He comes out and says, oh, the president... You know, this idea of pardoning the January 6th rioters and, and insurrectionists, that's not a good idea. Trump, within 24 hours, well, that rhino, you know. So mm -hmm. this is the space these people are, are bargaining bargaining in. There is no good outcome. This is an embar embarrassment for the National Party. You've made it harder it now for candidates running in local and, and statewide elections to run good races, because the first test will be for them, well, which butt cheek of Donald Trump are you willing to kiss? And, mm, and so that should wow. not be the standard for a national party. And that's what this action by my national committee man here in the state of Maryland, who wanted to expel them, you know, has taken. And so the test down for the RNC, which is one that they failed, falls to the candidates out there around the country. Do you buy into this crap or do you stand with Liz and Adam? I choose to stand with Liz and Adam because they they are good. I mean, you may disagree with them on policy, 
but when it comes to the, the dignity of the Constitution and the rights uh, that we all have under it, they're willing to stand for all Americans to protect that. And this action taken by the party says, we don't give a damn about those things. The only thing that matters to us is what Donald Trump thinks of us. And that's not a national party. Yeah, no, and uh, that there were some great mental images in there, Michael Steele. Um, <laughs> she's trying to get over those. Uh, Elise <laughs> Jordan, though, uh, jump in, because uh, I feel that they're they're doing something that's dangerous on many levels, including the fact that I mean this these two Republicans should be allowed to use their voices, and so this seems subversive in a number of ways. Well, it just shows, Mika, the ruling elites of the Republican Party are clamping down on all dissent when it comes to challenging Donald Trump. The Trump purity test is still very strong among the people who are literally making the rules as to how the Republican Party operates. Mm -hmm. And so even if Donald Trump's popularity falls slightly and you see a poll here and there that shows that some soft Trump supporters would maybe support Ron DeSantis Santos or another Republican in the primary, how does it change when the body that controls ultimately everything at the end of the day and the coronation process is still a wholly owned subsidiary of Donald Trump? And I think that's what we're seeing from this meeting of RNC officials this week. So Rev, the bottom line in all this is, if you boil it straight down to what we're seeing is, it is a minority position in the Republican Party right now to say January 6th was bad, that a coordinated effort to overturn a presidential election to stage a coup is bad. That's the minority position. If you hold that position, you will be run out of the party or at least marginalized by the party. The mainstream view is that was okay. And you'll be punished. I mean, I think what's happening today is even beyond that your minority view. You'll be punished for saying that. Yeah. And I think that that is a dangerous precedent. Uh, and it shows that they are officially showing as a party that they have become subservient to uh, Donald Trump. I must say, though, I've known uh, Michael Steele for many years. He's a Republican. I'm a Democrat. But I think our mothers hung out together because my mother used to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I hear ya. <laughs> okay. Mika. Meanwhile, hey, Mika. Yeah. Mika, can yeah. I make one one quick real one quick real point here? Uh, the really kind of okay. the, the great irony is that this is the same group of folks who rail against Democrats and rail against others about cancel culture. This is the ultimate in cancel culture right here, and and I think people You're should so understand right. exa exactly what we're looking at taking place inside the GOP right now. That is a really great point. Talk about cancel culture.